So the question is, in corticosteroids, what difference does it make when we use it PO or IV, and whether we're using high dose or very high dose or a mega dose of corticosteroids? And as you know, for some of our disorders, we're going to be choosing intravenous steroids. So for, for neurop, that's usually methylprednisolone. So we're going to be using intravenous methylprednisolone, and our go-to do dose is normally a gram of methylprednisolone for three to five days. And the reason is that we think there are both genomic and non-genomic effects of corticosteroids, and that those genomic and non-genomic effects have different mechanisms of action and time of onset. So the non-genomic effects are faster and are cytosolic and occur right away. And those kinds of effects are like membrane stabilization and can help reduce edema in the acute phase. And so for a disease like giant cell arteritis, where we're having luminal narrowing, that kind of effect can be reversed or stopped with high dose intravenous steroids, presumably at the non-genomic level. And the same thing is occurring when we have edema and leakage and endothelial damage. The genomic effects are the ones that are gonna tell all the lymphocytes to go home and reduce the lymphocytic infiltrate and, the, and tell the giant cells to stop doing what they're doing. And that takes longer, the hours to days, because it's gotta be incorporated into the genome and uh, translocated and translated, et cetera. So we've got both genomic and non-genomic effects. At a moderate doses, you pretty much have all your receptors saturated. And so really there would be no reason to give one gram of methylprednisolone when that 60 milligrams of oral prednisone is doing the exact same thing. However, because we believe that there are other non-genomic effects at play that include neuroprotection, membrane stabilization, and improvement in function, Diseases like giant cell arteritis with vision loss, we are going to choose intravenous methylprednisolone for theoretic reasons, even though there's not been a good head-to-head -head IV versus oral steroid therapy to answer this question.